Hey Techno Studs, in this video we're going to take a look at the TCP headers within Wireshark. In one of my prior videos, we did a capture of the data going between my demo laptop and my demo Pi. It was a web page request. So I pulled that up again and let's take a look at it. So first of all, what I see here is on the left hand side, it's coming from the IP address of the demo laptop and it's a request to get an HTTP page from the demo pi. So this is the packet that we're going to take a look at and see what the TCP header looks like. So on this packet, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the layer four section of this or the TCP section of this says this is a TCP uh, packet here. So we're going to open up the layer four, this TCP section. And the first couple things that we run across is the source port and the destination port. We've already talked about that in a prior video, so I'm not going to get more in depth into that in this video. Uh, then we see some additional data that is some of this data that is displayed is just data that uh, Wireshark has attached to it to make it easier for us to read. So we see some of that information here. Then we see the sequence number. We actually see sequence number in two different forms. Here's the raw form. The raw form is the sequence number that, uh, that these machines actually use. So if you go and look at the data, that is the actual data within the, uh, the packet. But what we have here is they, um, Wireshark has made it a little bit easier for us to interpret the data by putting in the sequence number that's relative. What that means is that uh, even though this is packet, oh, what is that number? It's um, 1,496,516,043. It said, well, we're just going to call this sequence number one. <laughs> it makes it a lot easier to read. So uh, we see the same thing with acknowledgement number. We have the acknowledgement number in the raw form of the data, which is this quite large number here. But they said, okay, well, what we're going to include so it's easier to read is an acknowledgement number that is relative. So this acknowledgement number here is just one. Uh, so there we have it. So there's the um, the acknowledgement, the sequence number and the acknowledgement number. Uh, we have the header length, which is 20 bytes. And then we see the flags here with a drop down. So total, it shows you what the sum of these flags are, or we can open it up and see what the individual flags are. So this has the acknowledgement set uh, bit set. That just means that the field that up here that has this acknowledgement number, this one right here, this acknowledgement uh, is relevant. So the one just means that, hey, pay attention to that field, pay attention to that number, it makes a difference. Uh, we've got the set or the push um, uh, flag set as well, it's, it's one. And uh, then we have the window size. So this is for windowing. So it specifies some data on that. Hey, like my videos? If you could hit that like button, that really helps me out. With once again, some brackets here telling us Wireshark has done some summaries. Uh, so that way we can, we can see that information. It shows us the checksum here. So uh, make sure that this, the information here is correct and hasn't been changed. And then uh, some information and then finally the TCP payload here. So here we see some of the fields within the TCP header and that measure, uh, those line up. Although the terminology can be a little different, it lines up with what we talked about. For instance, one of the things that is a little different in terminology is that we see a header length here and the uh, versus the data offset is what we covered in our in our lecture. But so it can go by a little uh, different names here. But for the most part, these all these fields lined up with what we talked about in in the uh, uh, one of the prior videos.